reductions, and what do we do with them? There is a vastly different word flow when it comes to cash flow. One word flow is something was live cash flow while it happened. Let's say morning news or sports. And then somebody goes and does a cut down, they're like, hi, we work for a sports network, and then we recut it together. And they're like, while you're editing, could you please just like fix some of the spelling mistakes or go in, clean it up, get the player names right, things like that. Well, Premiere makes it really easy to work with material that's already been captioned. Premiere makes it really easy to import captions made by a dedicated captioning application and sync them up and work with them. Premiere makes it possible to create captions from scratch. Did you notice that there was a missing phrase word in there? <laughs> yes. So it is really relatively easy to do this, and it's better than any other NLE, but dedicated captioning tools are dedicated captioning tools. Now, there are lots of captioning tools on the market, and do any of you own captioning software? What's the licensing fee on the capturing software that you use? Yeah, they get really expensive. Yeah, they can get really expensive. Uh, several thousand dollars. I use a cheap tool called Movie Captioner. Um, I don't know if it's cross-platform. I really can't remember, and I apologize. I'll look to see if it is really quick, if we can find out. Um, movie Captioner, choose Register, nope, just take me to the dang website, about Movie Captioner, all right, be that way. We'll just try to look it up on the web. So um, you don't have to use a tool like this, It's but they can be useful. MovieCaptioner.com, of course that's not going to work. That does not look right, does it? Nope. <laughs> Herein lies the problem. All right, closed captioning software for Mac and Windows. Well, that's good. And this is one of the cheapest tools out there. So it is a single user license, $100. Um, and before like, any of you think that's remotely expensive, in the world of closed captioning, this is the ghetto of closed captioning software. It, it, it's not as rich as other things, but it does work. Um, and I'm just going to throw out there that basically what you do is you load a movie and you just grab a movie and toss it in. There we go. And I'll grab that. And if you have a script, there we go, you can actually just basically load the script in and then as you're listening to it play back, you notice here there's just a simple shortcut of like split caption. So you can actually just watch in real time and either hit a shortcut key or just start adding breaks between the captions and watch in real time. So for something that's scripted that you already have a text script for or a transcript for, pretty simple. So it is a real time thing. But it's what we call monkey work. Um, and it's not a derogatory term. It just means that literally it's like the equivalent of monkeys and you have a keyboard. All they have to do is hit a key and it will write for you and break it for you. And it will split things up and have things. And it does do a good job. Something's happening again. Let's see if it breaks down. So you can't see the numbers. There we go. That's a good deal. You will notice that under the export menu, it does specifically export. Uh, Premiere Pro compatible titles, along with almost everything else, and subtitle files for DVD author tools and other things. So this is one of the few tools that is designed to make other things, from captions to time text to everything else. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use Premiere. I'm not going to walk through Premiere and how to use it. I'm just putting out there that there are more full-featured tools that make it pretty easy to load in a movie, load in a script, and just tap a key periodically to sync things up and add line breaks. Okay? All right. Now, when you make captions, let's go into Premiere here for a second. The official workflow 
is that, oh, okay, you should have a movie file and a caption file. And that's one workflow. The other workflow is that the captions were already embedded in the video file. Like you got the things were live captioned or they were previously captioned, like a show, and you pull that in. Now, a couple of you mentioned promo editing. Sometimes with promo editing, the original narrative captions are laid in on top, and you're using something as B-roll, and you've got a narrator on top of it, so you may have to go through and delete captions from the source material. So that's another thing to really look out for, is like, you know, do we have two streams of information going on? All right, so let's just take a simple PSA, and I've got the caption file that was made in an external tool, and it's this simple. You just drag it in and put it on a track above. And by default, you're not going to see it. Because you're going to play. You're like, it's your car. Captions? You take it to people you trust. It's because you have to go into the settings menu here. <coughs> choose closed caption display and enable so you can see it. Also, depending upon the type of captions you have, you need to make sure you specify which format you're using. Technically, the 708 should be used for HD material, although lots of people are still using 608 for HD material because they're broadcasting both standard and high def, right? You guys are still doing 608, right? Yeah. So it's like officially 708 is the HD standard, but 608 is often still widely used. Do you guys sometimes want to use one or the other? They just need to go back, right? Yeah, you can open one up and convert it with the utility pretty easily. But here's what's important below this is which stream. Notice there's multiple streams. And so this is where, same idea here, right? They just call it something different. This is where you have to specify if you're dealing with multiple languages, each one of those streams could be a different language. Can't have more than one per uh, sequence. No, you can have. You can actually stack them up. So if you have like, and then you just choose on the settings which ones you want to see. Now you might be wondering, well, where do where does that get set? Well, I'm going to show you that in a moment. When you create a new closed caption one from scratch, then you can create you can set what it is. Otherwise, it was probably set when it was first created. No. Nope. <laughs> Talk to the broadcaster. So, and then you even try to get them to document it. So, you know, usually English is one and Spanish is two, but I've seen other things. It depends on where you are and where you are in the world. Um, all right, so there is a panel called Captions. And uh, if you don't see it by default, I usually end up dragging it up here to the source monitor so it's bigger. Remember, you can go into the window menu and open it up. And let's just play this here. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. Boy, the total rebuild, uh, you were wanting to rip out your linkage. That's just an estimate, little lady. It's your finances. You want to go to the experts. Cut your payments by 50. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find problem. a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Visit www.credit.org. Right. So, <laughs> so here's a re very real world example, right? The, the people who made the captions put them in the standard spot, which happens to be the standard spot for things like web URLs and phone numbers and spots. Bottom line, covering information. So we're going to fix that. And there was a word mistake. You know, he said linkage, they typed linkage. You know, yes, it was a thick southern accent, and you know, he was swarthy mechanic, so. You know, it's easy to get listed, but watch, here it is, so. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. All right, so there it is. Let me just find it. Uh, oh, here we go. Let me just update that. Your linkage. L-I-N-K-A-G-S. Period. Done. Fixed. Now, you may or may not be impressed, but on any other tool, that's impossible. So... Hopefully, you're like, oh, well, that wasn't hard. Like, fixing little mistakes in the caption file is not hard. 
if you start editing together material that's previously captioned, or if the captions were out of sync. Like if this first caption started a little bit late. It's your car. A little late. Okay, well, let me just adjust the in point of that and uh, have that start at 20 frames. Cool, now it starts earlier. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. tricky is you have to realize when using this that these timings over here can't overlap. You can have gaps between them, like one disappears and another covers, but as you're working with this, it gets a little confusing. And a lot of people will make this mistake. They'll make a new closed caption file, you know, and it'll automatically set the width to match the thing. This is a non-standard movie file in here. It's fine. And notice I could choose the style and the stream. And then they'll dump it in their timeline, and they'll be like, why can't I make this any longer? Why does it stop there? Well, because it's only 229 long. So you have to make sure that as you're adding things to it or you're working with it, it may not exactly match the duration of your file. So you have to just look at it as you're adding text and everything, that you know, the, the final durations line up. Okay. I'll just pull that out. Now. As we're working with this, easy enough, um, let's just say we were done. Now, we've got other examples we're going to look at in a moment, but we're done and we need to do something with this. When you go to create the media file, you're going to notice a couple of things. First off, you might have missed that there's an actual captions tab in the media export box. It's right there. It's after video and audio. Oh, the third most important thing to a video signal for broadcast is video, audio, and captions. Like, you know, it's in there. Um, and so you could choose, well, what happens? Do I want to put it in the file, or do I want to make a sidecar file? So most broadcasters are embedding it in the output file, so it's actually in the video file, and it plays back, the TV decodes it, that's great. Other people are making a sidecar file, so that they can hand it off to another application, maybe an application that converts it to subtitles for a DVD or time text for a web play or a TV. So, and here's the interesting thing, and this is to change. It used to be you always had to export video. You can now not export video and just make the captions by just simply turning off video and audio and make just captions only. But I'll embed that in the file for right now. And when you embed it in the file, you don't get any choices. So I could just simply say, okay, match the sequence settings, put the file here, and export captions. Oh, it doesn't want to do that when I do match sequence settings, my bad. Embed in file, but we'll match that up there. Fine for now. Export. And it writes the file and it embeds the captions into the file. And if you enter it off to a playback server or anything else, as long as the required hardware was in the chain to broadcast captions, it would show up. Simply embedding it in the file, if you're a TV station or your cable station or your satellite distribution thing doesn't broadcast the captions, then they won't go out. But it's technically in the file. You've probably heard the phrase line 21 indicating where it's inserted into the video file, and that's simple enough. 
Besides putting it in the file, though, you can also make the sidecar file, which we'll talk about as soon as this finishes. And the sidecar file can be in a wide range of formats. Essentially, Sonara's closed caption file <coughs> is one of the more common ones. I believe, if my memory serves me right, Sonara's was originally in Ethan. Um, and so that was one way of doing it. And uh, come on, finish. It's always amazing when, like, the timers never line up. I'm sure it's only my computer that the estimated time remaining thing is meaningless. But. <laughs> so. um, and then, of course, it's important that you match the frame rates up as well. Because if the frame rates aren't lining up, then it won't line up with the source. Right, so that one's done. Now, good. And let's do this. Make that sidecar file. And notice here, basically, Sonaris, Mac Caption is one of the more popular tools. They actually make a tool called PC Caption as well. They've been around for a long time. This is the interesting one, W3C. Context file. Now you see that SIP key and virtual broadcasting you can also use context. And this is a less proprietary tool. But the W3C is the worldwide web search engine. The group that sets the standard for the web. YouTube, a bunch of other HTML5 players, other things out there, use time text. So if I just make a time text file here, there we go. Specify the frame rate, that's great. And I can, you know, put this out. There we go. Let's just good enough. We'll put that out for now. I'm going to make that, and I'll just rename it. Good save. Yep. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Fine. Send the audio out to the insist. It's supposed to be smart enough to do just the captions, but that's fine. For some reason that's a bug, but because it used to just be you can uncheck both. But that's okay. We'll just export that. Much faster to do audio than video compression, right? And so there is my file. Okay. And so let's open that. Open with text edit. Okay, and there's all of the specifications. And it just basically says, oh, here's the text, here's the time, this is the color, this is the font family to use. And if you had to, you could actually use with the text editor like a global replace. So if they said, oh, the color's wrong, it's not supposed to be white. I know a lot of you aren't web people, but this is basically like a slight off white. That's hex color, but like hex web color, if you can see in Photoshop or in the web here. That's describing the text, what the color is in the text. Oh, it's a pop up style. They come back and say, no, 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 we want roll on. Well, then you could just do a global replace and update that in the file. Okay. These do not give you this big history of code. I get it. If you read it, and you do. But this is just an XML file. And before you go, this is an XML file template. Please stop that. XML is a universal language thing. It is a final cut XML. But XML is the extensible markup language, it's a computer language that's designed for interoperability between computer applications. That's all this is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you like a spell checker? <laughs> a global search and replace, like, oh, the name's misspelled throughout the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. And then just pull it back in and use it. Yes. <laughs> Much easier to make updates in a Word doc with a word processor than in Premiere Pro. So yes, you could. Well, I'm going to show you. I'm about to pull that movie back in that I did. So I already exported that movie. And let's just re-import it. Uh, here it is. This one, I believe. And so let's just put that into a new sequence. Okay. Now, it's supposed to be in there. Hopefully I did it. Now, it looks like I didn't embed. should have embedded. Did I pull the wrong one in? Let's try again. Well, it's supposed to be in the file itself. And let me just bring up the captions window. I'll bring in another example later that has it. But... 
you're supposed to be able to see it embedded in the movie. Let me see if I dragged the wrong one into the timeline really quick. Because I could have, because they have the exact same name. Because, you know, it's not like naming your files is important. Um, I'm sure I did operator error, but it should embed in the movie itself. And then you turn it on and you can see it. So I've worked with previously captured material. When you bring it in, it usually recognizes it. I did something wrong, but we'll deal with that in a moment. All right. Now, I also mentioned that sometimes position is a problem. So if you've got a problem on the captions, you can just simply find that caption. We've got all these credit card bills. Select it. And, oh, okay, raise that uh, to position 12. And so you can reposition it. If you're dealing with different people talking on different sides of the screen, you can adjust the left center or right alignment or emphasize the underline. Give it two people to change the color, change the angle point, adjust the speech and sound Um, No, the timeline playhead does not really translate. So if I'm here, and I go to captions. We can help. You gotta basically like navigate through it. But you could just look at the time here and look at the time here to quickly find it. So you don't have to like read everything. Yeah. Yeah, you can use the filter with those. So it's not as it, it's it's eighty five yes, it's just totally I'm not even gonna try to justify, to justify why it doesn't. It's like one of those things where, like I said, it's the best one out there. Yeah. I still have a long list of things I'm supposed to have. Oh, right. yeah. It still oh. is, yeah, it still is pretty cool. Yeah, go ahead. Going back to another conversation that we had with the people who were trying to Yeah, so all you would do is like what we basically did. You would just export it and yeah. have it exported to a sidecar yeah. file. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way to like. No, there's not a simple thing to pull it off into a file. Yeah. Yeah, well, there was one. In the previous version, there was sidecar file only, and, and now it's not working. So I'm going to file a bug report. But yes, sidecar only should be a list of like, this is already captioned. All I need is files. Rip it out for me. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But they're asking, like, we have all this material stuff that's already captioned and the web department wants it. Couldn't I just export that without taking a hit on compressing a new video? Yes. All right. That's one workflow. I'm going to go on to some other more advanced workflows, but at the simplest, most fundamental level, did that seem okay? Okay. So, you know, you brought a file, a caption file in. You can make some changes to it, you can adjust it, it's fine. All right, if you are working with stuff and you needed to sort of start from scratch, starting from scratch is not fun. The $99 that that captioning program cost, I would recommend. But I do have folks on my team and sometimes we just don't have time and we have to do things quickly, okay? So here's a good example. Sometimes you need to get stuff in kind of quick to work with it. So let me just bring in this interview. Okay, there we go. I'll drag that in. And one of the things that a lot of folks don't know about is the auto analysis of a clip versus uh, attaching a script. So I can do things like this. I could take this clip and choose, well, first off, let me bring up the metadata panel because some of these clips are already done. There it is. So this clip was already done. And this one's really accurate, but not perfect. And here's this one. So I'm only going to do one of these while I work with the other. So you select a clip and you say clip, analyze content. Tell the language. These other languages are available for download from Adobe's website. They're not hard to find. You 
just type in Adobe Speak Analysis Modules, I do the big right to download page and the description. And these are the ones that are available. Speech recognition technology is not nearly as good as it should be for two reasons. One, years ago, Microsoft bought up all the companies that owned them and then sat on the technology because they got distracted by something else. Only now are some of those rights reverting back to the companies from inactivity. And the other stuff that's really awesome, I live in DC, every time I drive by some things up, so I'm going to uh, is that the NSA has some delays on certain things that they have rights to that we don't. We have always going to lose the technology. So there's awesome audio analysis technology out there. We just need to work with the NSA or you know, get Microsoft to release the rights back to people so they can start developing it. But it's still not bad. It's better than nothing. Does that, and I know that doesn't sound good, but if the requirement is to have something and you have nothing, then is it better? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but trust me. I'll show you how to make it really good. So without the script, you just choose it. You say yes, do the slow method, and you click OK. If you do have a script or a transcript, it gets really accurate. About 95 to 99% accurate. Now, there's a gotcha. And it's not really a gotcha, it's just an important step that most people don't know. And that is that when you open up the file, it needs to be <clears throat> a UTF-8 text file, which is an extremely specific file format. So if you say file, save as, and you just say, oh, uh, make that plain text not good enough. <laughs> You have to click the Options button. And you have to go in and you, know, you kind of have to look at that. Okay. And then under plain text here, when I say, okay, I got that, that's fine. Let me save that. Here it is. Not Mac OS, not MS-DOS, other encoding, Unicode, UTF-8. It has to be UTF-8, which is three clicks away. I don't know why. But this is why this always screws up. And everyone's like, it doesn't work. It doesn't transcript. It doesn't work. It has to be a UTF-8 text file. You can do this with TextEdit, Notepad, any other tool. You just have to go into the preferences of the Save As, and you have to choose UTF-8. Got it? That's the big gotcha. Once you have that text file, it's basically like the plainest of plain text files. Then when you run the analysis, you could say, add script, and you point it at it and choose it, you know, after you added it, and when you click OK, it's going to use that, and it's going to get really accurate. Now, when you click OK, it's got a launch media encoder, it's going to stick that file in, and it's going to start analyzing in the background. Boom. It's going through. Now, there's two ways of doing this. That automatic analysis has some benefits, right? You can take that auto-generated transcript, hand it off to an intern with the movie, and say, listen to this while the movie plays back, and quickly fix anything that could focus. Or you could say, I don't have any time whatsoever. I have to have something on here that's equally close. Let me do this. And you can just take it as is. I'm going to show you another workflow with After Effects a little bit later. But that's a completely different, very complicated workflow that's tricky. But I'm going to show you how After Effects can do something with these markers that I really wish we were close to. And we'll work on doing that. Yeah. You select a clip, choose Clip, Analyze Content, pick the language, pick the quality, click OK. If you have a transcript, you simply say add, and you navigate to the transcript or the script and attach it. Is that okay for everybody? Now, this feature is great as an editor. Like, we've got tons of interviews that we've auto-analyzed, and so now, if I'm down here, I can just say, oh, well, find me a clip where he says spark, or find me a clip where he says, you know, computer, and it's going to start to filter everything down, or you could search up here for words, 
and I'll find the word spark. Oh, there's all the place where it is. I can come down here and just quickly scan and mark in and out points to define a sound bite for an edit. This is part of Premiere. This has been there, by the way, for seven years. Okay? So there's the added bonus for coming to this class. It's like, as an editor, I like to just quickly scan my interviews in real time and just read through them faster than real time, I should say, and I could quickly find sound bites and mark what I want. And this is great, even if it, you know, even if it, and here's the thing, like, speech analysis could suck, but usually it's the clearly enunciated words that you're looking for that are like a specific, unusual word. Search for it, find it in the clip, boom, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let me just load that clip. And there's my in and out. See? Good enough? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is one of those features that like I keep telling them, is it done? It would be a lot sexier if they actually talked about these. Things. Well, it, it is, and you gotta realize that it's not that. But if you attach a transcript, the cost of transcripts aren't like that. We you know, we did seven interviews for this company. Each interview is about 20 minutes long. It costs about 240 bucks to get you know all those interviews transcribed. Okay, so oh, four day service, go. You can analyze the content first, start to edit with it, and then when the transcripts come back, analyze them again. The cost of transcripts there. You know, it's fine. And it doesn't matter if you've already edited, it doesn't screw anything up. Now, we got that content. If you are in the metadata panel, you can just right click in here and choose copy all, and then go to your text editor or what else and paste that all in. If you needed to start making transcripts or um, things by hand, you could just you know dump this into a timeline. Oh, make a new caption file. Right. There we go. Cool. Match that. 708, service one. Great. Cool. Come on, try again. Oh, it's because I typed a word in. Unfiltered. There we go. And dump that into the timeline, or dump that into the clip. There we go. And now in my captions panel, I would just do this. I'd set the duration of the first caption to basically be like two frames. Paste all that text in. And then just start at the top. New caption. Play. Too because so often I hear people say, well, I don't want to use Dropbox because I'm afraid the guys with the black helicopters are going to come and they're going to get all my information. Oh, let, I, I had an in and out point on that. Sorry. So let me put that interview all the way back to the beginning. That was my bad because I had in and outs. Okay, let me just clear that out. There we go. Now it'll line up. There we go. Sure, my name is David Sparks. I'm an attorney by day and I'm a geek by night. I've been practicing law now 20 years. Pause. Okay. So here it is, you know. I'm an attorney by day and I'm a geek by night. I've been practicing law for 20 years. Cut. Paste. Set my in and out point. Go to the next one. It's not fast, it's the manual. That's why I recommend drop the 100 bucks on a dedicated captioning tool where you can just tap out the line breaks in real time. Premiere is designed for editing captions or adjusting the timing on captions, but not really creating captions from scratch. So drop the 100 bucks on a captioning tool that's faster, but you could just take that thing and paste it in. Now, that's a workflow. I reckon, now, I know plenty of people who are stubborn and make this work. And if you're only dealing with a video that was 90 seconds long, and you only need to do captioning you know, three times a year, fine. Or maybe you work at a place and you're a freelancer and they need it and can't get this tool. You can make it work. It's just not as fast. 
Is it faster than let me export the file, FTP it to the captioning company, pay them a bunch of money, wait three days and get it back? Yes. But it's what you call monkey work. It's work that at this point of all of your careers, you would rather not be doing. Here, monkey, have a banana. Could you please do this? You know, that's what you want. So you want to hand this work off. All right. That's our workflow. Let's go forward. Now, if I've done that analysis, I want to show you something interesting in After Effects. That's weird. Um, and I consider it weird because it's, it's something I wish Premiere Pro did. Any of you ever have to do like simple motion graphics where text lines up to words like builds or infographics? Yeah. So if you analyze your video clips in Premiere and then give the clip to After Effects, After Effects can turn every single word into a marker, making it really easy to time out graphics for narration. So the important thing is that you have to go into your preferences. And I believe it's under general, but let me find it. It is this thing that says, maybe it's under import. Nope. Try to remember. It's a preference that basically says turn open XML into markers. So look for here for something about XML. I'll find it. Synchronize, right, dynamic link. So I already turned it on, that's the problem. Or might be, we'll find it. Here, it's under media and disk cache. Write XMP ID files on import, create layer markers from footage XMP metadata. Yeah, it's in a weird place. Media and disk cache is where it's stored, even though it has nothing to do with media or dispatch. So, yeah, we'll figure it out. This makes no sense when you read it. Like, why would they have that? Okay. But it's cool. So, watch this. As I bring those files in, there we go. Comes in. And I'll put those into comps. Notice, see all those like crazy little marks there? Let's zoom in a little bit. Each one of those marks is a freaking word. Now, you've heard people talk about after effects, you've heard people say script or spray. You may know people who can make things. These are people that are like crazy brains, like get programming language stuff that I don't know. I know people who can make things. Yes, I can cut things other people's scripts. Yes, I'm about to you set my friends. I can use other people's expressions. I can't create an expression. Just like I can read HTML code and go into Dink with it and fix something when it's wrong. But I can't just think of it from scratch. All right. Yes. So there is a preset that you could find called captioning.ffx. And I, if you can't find it, um, let me find it here. Captioning. And if you can't find this with a web search, I'll send it to you. But basically, I got it off of like a, one of the AE scripts websites. It was a free script. And uh, it's just called captioning.ffx. It might have even been made by Adobe. And you just drag it into your effects and presets library to use it. So you're like, you're like, where is that library? Well, how about I just say browse presets? There we go. And this will launch bridge and take you right to your presets library where all of your effects presets are stored. And then it's very easy to find it on your hard drive. You know, backgrounds, text animations. I just drag this one in, captioning.ffx. So let me see. I'll do a web search so you realize this is not hard to find. Is it? Okay. You downloaded it before? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So not Final Fantasy, but it's on AE scripts. So there we go. All right. You can do After Effects, captioning, script, and probably find it. And 
it's a little tricky when you first use it, which is why I actually, it comes with a sample project, okay? And so here's the benefit of the sample project. Um, it's just called ccexpressions.aep is the project that it comes with, uh, or expression examples, both of these are out there. And essentially I do this. So let's just open this up. So I got the wrong one. One second. Uh, CC expressions. There we go. And I'll bring that media in. And there's a little sample here that shows you what it looks like. Captioning file, audio, it's got the script. So I'll just bring in that file that I've run through analysis. And I'll just put that into a new comp. Then, with my text tool, I will draw out the area that I want the captions to go from here to here. By drawing a box for the text, it'll automatically wrap when it reaches the edges. This is called area text. It's the same in Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, Title Tool, everything else. Don't just click and start typing and then start using hard returns. Just draw a box for the text. And then you could set the size and everything else. And we could change the size a little bit later. I'll just put the word text in there for now so I can get an idea on what it looks like. And usually I'll put a little border on that text because that's what we call type on pattern. So you need a contrasting edge on the text. And we'll refine this in just a moment. So now, once you've done that, you basically just get this script, it's under your effects and presets, and you just drag it on the text layer. It's going to immediately throw up an error saying, oh, I, I can't find this. Where is this thing called audio? It's looking for a layer called audio. You can rename this layer audio if it would work, or you can just get rid of that layer and just name it. So here's what happens. I hit OK. Let's just make this a little bigger so we see it. Drag that on one more time. There we go. Click OK. And one of the properties of the text layer under text is a property called source text. So now there's the expression for the source text. And you see the little exclamation point saying something is wrong? So, oh, it says source text equals this comp layer named audio. Oh, put five words per line and use these markers. Great. So all I got to do is scroll down here. Yes, there's the error again. Select, enter to or return to select the layer, copy, come back up here and say, oh, okay, the layer is actually called this. There we go. And it's going to update. Okay. Now, when you do that, you may need to adjust the size and a handful of other things. We'll do that in a second. But I'm going to say, you know what? Allow more words. Put 12 words on a line. All right. So now, let's just start to drag through. There we go. Like that? Now, yes, if you they donate. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So this just took all those captions and made them visible. Now you might be saying, but I want the I want to control the line breaks and where the line breaks happen. Well, it's just off of markers, and that simple script said, in my case, take 15 words and put them up there. So if you need to add another marker to force a line break. Okay, Sparks, Mini, It, so let me just go to one where it's kind of like a weird break. Oh, okay, easy enough. Zoom in here, select a layer, and the it's 8 on your nu numeric keypad, or add marker if you don't have a numeric keypad, it's Control-8. Look, I just changed where the break was. Just add an extra blank marker that doesn't have a word, 
and now you can control where the line breaks are happening. And if you need to end the marker, just double-click on the marker. Now, I know that this looked a little bit intimidating, to, but in the scheme of things, as far as burn in open captions, I just captioned a 10 minute interview in about four minutes if I load properly. <laughs> I did all the work. And you can go back and tweak and refine. These are nice open captions. If you needed to export to something like the in flight entertainment system on an airline, where you want burned in captions, uh, digital signage, PowerPoint presentations, the web. Many places are starting to just post two different movies, a burned in caption and a non burned in caption, with a lot of the players that are out there with flash dependent. They don't work on mobile devices. So you either have to provide a player that supports captions. Or you have to provide two movies, one that's with captions and one that's without. I'll do this again from scratch just for fun, but questions or comments or concerns? Yeah. Yeah, so let's say you didn't do that yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Just. Yeah. Or if you've got, the thing is, is it doesn't even matter if the transcript perfectly matches the timeline, or if you. Analyzed all of the interviews in the first place before you put them in. Oh, so when you pull a clip, when you start editing it, that stuff's embedded inside the clip. It goes with the clip. Yeah, yeah, it stays with the clip, and it can even be done before you get the footage. It doesn't have to be done by the editor. It stays with the clip on the server. So once it's done, it's always there. We have. A decade worth of doctor interviews that we've done this on. So when the hospital wants to put together something really quickly, we can go searching for specific sound bites very quickly in the comments. Okay. Other questions or I'll do one of these again. Yeah. Yes. How does that change? They have the option to make that You just make that time text file. And, and when you upload your video, you also upload the time text file. Now, YouTube will automatically caption your stuff. And it takes anywhere from four hours to two days, depending on the battery. Here's what's interesting. If you have a YouTube uh, partner account, which anybody can get, you basically agree that they can monetize your videos and that you give them permission for ads. And you go in and just turn off their permission for ads afterwards as soon as they grant you status. And they never unrevoke the partner status. This is how you get Google Hangouts and you remove the 15 minute limit on Hangouts so you can post up every week. You become a YouTube partner. And then you can simply say, well, at this time, I'm not interested in monetizing my material with ads. You turn the chat box off. Great little loophole. Well, Google doesn't have enough time to fix it. But of course, I'm going to be screwed because I don't use Yeah, we're going to pick on that guy. But, um, you upload the time text file. But if you don't have it and you upload it to YouTube, you just set the video to be unpublished and you upload it a couple of days before you want to release it. And then the captions will be there and when you go public, the captions are already there because it's been on their system, it just runs in the background. And you can actually go in and edit those captions on YouTube as well, like we just did. So usually what we do is we will allow YouTube to auto caption. And we go in and we fix things like names and product names and big things that are important for SEO. And that stuff is searchable. So when Google does do a search on videos, it does warrant that and it does actually allow you to click for the YouTube to queue up and put that transcript. Yes? So when you give YouTube the time text, is that still in effect? No. Okay. But it'll be less. But it still will take a little bit of time to get through the system. Yeah, I mean, there is hard. And, and don't say, well, here I ask if I'm going to code. Right? It's, YouTube is a machine that just runs off of scripts and automation. I mean, put it this way, right? Things about YouTube you don't have to realize. Uh, people can create a fake account and file DMCA tip down notice. And at the end of that, if you don't respond, your account gets taken down. Like, I can take down the ABC YouTube channel by filing three DMCA copyright violations. 
And they don't even bother to verify that I'm a real person. And if your person who manages your YouTube channel doesn't actually pay attention to the email that comes in, you can go to your channel for your feed. Which is why you want to go into your channel and turn off all the stupid notifications like notify me every time somebody leaves a comment. Notify me every time I do a follow-up. So you actually need to report the emails about copyright information. So there's that. Uh, and the other thing that's good is that uh, you have to pay attention to that because music, when they do the same task for the transcript, they've got a huge library of music, including a bunch of <coughs> stock music that somehow ended up being flagged as copyrighted. And videos would get kicked out of YouTube all the time for properly licensed and approved music because it shows that it's a copyright violation. Now that's a sidebar from where we're at, but it happens at the same time because their version of audio analysis is going to make the transcript. They're also analyzing the music track for the content. So if you're on YouTube and your auto writes and you're not using that auto to see it, then mm -hmm. they know it's not true. Correct. And uh, let me just show you YouTube, for example. So um, when you go to YouTube and you look at a video, uh, let's just pick something here. Pick something of mine, since I'll be familiar with the content. Uh, there we go. Okay. I think this is me. Yep, yeah, perfect. We're in Vegas. All right. Turn the volume down because you don't need to hear me talking over me. But closed captions. Fine. Options. You can specify the font, the color, the size, the background, all sorts of things. Okay. Play. But um, that's where you can see it. And there's the transcript right there. Of course, because you know you all would recognize this icon for being the dreadful genius of icon for transcripts, right? <laughs> uh, if it was your video, when you log in under your settings, you can log in. This is my video, but it's published by Lynda.com, and I'm not an admin on the account. But if I, I'll go into my video manager in a minute. But notice here, I can click, and it does queue up the video to that point. Right? Make sense? And if you want more control, you upload the time text. That's why it says automatic captions. If I go into my video manager here for a second, let me just go up here to, come on. I'll go to photo focus for a second. And, uh, When I go into a video that I control, you can actually go to, let me go to my video manager, sorry. You can go into the video manager, and when you select that video and say edit, then this is where you could start to access extra content, including you should be able to find the transcripts in there, and then you can edit them. So it's under one of these settings here. I'm trying to remember. Video language preference statistics. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, because Google moves their user interface elements every other day. So, so you say this is the language, and here's the, you know, so you can start adding. That's when you want to add subtitles and closed captions. But you can go in, and you should be able to find the existing ones that were there. If I click on that. There we go. There they all are. And now I can select the one and hit edit and do the fixing. Thank you. Uh, I don't believe so, but it's it's Google, so I never say yes or no. 
Oh, download. Now we can. So, and there's another idea. The <laughs> Google, which does have some really good speech analysis modules, by the way, analyze your video for you, then download that and clean it up. It will be faster than the capture company you sent to, unless you guys do this. But for everybody else, you can get really fast. And you can select the file format, download it, open it up, edit it, and then import it into Google Chrome. I would just pick download, and um, most of these here, you may need to get a, you would have to choose one of these formats. Um, I think SRT is going to be the one that's most compatible. Yeah, going from memory. <laughs> and uh, let's bring that into Premiere and see what happens. Okay, I'll just put that on the desktop so I can find it quickly. And where did I put it? Thank you. It's great out. So you might have to convert it, but that's not hard. There's lots of utilities out there that um, I should be able to open it up with that uh, movie captioner app I was using before. Oh, interesting. But we'll try one of them. One of them is going to work. Download. You, you laugh, but people are like, how do you figure things out? I'm like, I try all the options, and when one works, I stop. <laughs> so one of those will work. And of course, we have no connection speed here whatsoever, but let's see. All right. I'm... So um, import text in, so one of these will come in. There we go. Import SRT file. No. But look, there. Boom. There's that one hour transcript that they did for free for me. And you know what? That's, look at that. That looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? Like the accuracy. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, think about this, right? Google, about four hours after my thing, had a really uh, auto generated transcript. And I'll let you know a secret. Google has really good auto generated transcripts. Pulled it all in, ran it through this $100 program, although you do need the program that was free. There you go. And you can convert it, and then now I could just export that. Uh, now, in this case, I do have to drag a movie in for this program to work, so I'd have to load the movie as well. But what most people don't realize is if you did like a live hangout on Google, you do have the ability to download the video file if you're the owner. You can download this file as an MPEG-4. And then you can import it in, and then you've got captions. So does this give you some ideas on, like, Ways of using this stuff, you will look. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Very good. Google Hangouts are a great way to do live webcasting, so uh, you just have to pull that stuff in. Now, let me finish out a couple of examples, and that is this. So, we talked about analysis, we talked about open titles. Um, this is also not sexy, but you know, without being trite you may find yourself just doing title tool. You know, this is a way of doing open captions. And you can pull things in and just cut it in, tap out your markers as you go. Um, side note, by the way, for those of you on a Mac, uh, you may never have thought of this, but you can do something along the lines of this. Let's just open up a new text edit document. There we go. And let me open up a movie. Take that interview that we had. There we go. Uh, good. Open with a quick time seven so it doesn't try to convert it to crazy file. 
There we go. View half size. Great. Cue that up a little bit. It's a good thing, though, right? I never get that. All right. Can you introduce yourself to the audience? Just tell us your name and what you do. Sure. My name is. So you do need a fast internet connection for this. Come on. Apparently internet's not fast enough here. It might be. But yeah, what I was, there we go. This is it talking and it's going to capture the audio of my voice. So now let's switch to QuickTime Player. The shift to collaborate with others. In order to get our jobs done, we have to collaborate. Interesting. Oh, two Mac apps. They don't like, they don't like that. So use Premiere Pro with Don't Stop Playback. Here's a great thing. So remember in Premiere Pro, you can be playing back something. Come on. We'll just grab that. As I warned you, this is the first time this class has ever been taught, which means that you get the unfiltered, slightly imperfect view. But hopefully this has been useful. So let's just pull that up. Premiere has a great don't stop playback feature. Which because we've got video and photographs and all sorts of data in there. And using the transporter, we're able to put it into a secure location. Interesting. So it's once the mic. So what I've usually done here, um, this is probably because ScreenFlow is running. But even if it's not, you can do this on your iPad. Your iPad has the same voice dictation. So you can now, when you're sharing these things, it in. there's lots of different so solutions out there. But I'll tell you that the, 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 in all seriousness, you're done with the fine cut, you kicked it to the client, upload a video to YouTube. When you come back the next morning, it's going to be a caption that you can download. And then just clean it up and cut it down and be done with it. Please don't spread that far and wide because <laughs> I don't want them to like remove the download button. But and, and don't get me wrong, the people that do captioning professionally, if you can afford them, will do great work. And they will make it completely compliant and they will get all the timings and everything right for you. But um, I got to tell you, I'm pretty damn impressed with the auto download and transfer with all of the timings ready to go. Right? I'm just pretty much impressed. Huh? Huh? Yeah, it's a newer thing. Yeah, and I'm sure you'll offend people with the translation, but it's closer. <laughs> yes, and, I, and I, I hate to say that this is the class where the theme is, is it's good enough, but that is actually part of it when it comes to this, is that something is better than nothing. All right, so we are pretty much out of time.